Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Bridget Campbell. I'm a research student from Macquarie University. Uh, today I'm co-presenting my talk with Lupia Murungur from the Yurauka Ranges, who I collaborated with on my master's research project, where we looked at bringing together Indigenous and Western science in species distribution modelling. Uh, first, we just want to acknowledge and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging of the Larrakia peoples of Darwin and also the Yolnu Wangamatanu people or traditional owners of Northeast Arnhem Land, uh, where we conducted our project. Uh, so now I'm just going to hand over to Lupia. He's going to introduce himself, um, his position with the Rangers, and also give you some background context into them. Hello, um, my name is Lupia Munungur. I am the um, range coordinator for Yiraka Ranges. Um, as you can see over there, that's that's the IPA. Our IPA. Um, it's we have three IPA management um, happening in that area. We uh, overlap with um, the guy who was talking the other side, uh, Otto. That's the area for swamp uh, ranges and uh, Timuru ranges right at the top of the map there. Um, we, it's about um, 17,000 kilometers uh, land and sea country. Um, Yuraka ranges were established uh, in 2006 by Yulungu traditional owners. And uh, we have 40 ranges and 12 different homelands at stations that we service. Um, and as Lilpia was saying, the Lanapoi IPA actually overlaps with other Indigenous protected areas in Arnhem Land. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, Indigenous protected areas in general across the whole of Australia actually make up almost 50% of our national reserve system. So that includes all of our national parks and other protected areas. So a very big portion. Uh, okay. Um, but how did we first meet? So I'm from Sydney. How did I end up in Northeast Arnhem Land? Uh, so Lil P and I first met on a cross-cultural biodiversity survey, which was run in collaboration between the Yurauka Rangers and my supervisor, Dr. Amelia Enns from Macquarie University. And these biodiversity surveys involved um, trapping and identification of native vertebrate fauna. Um, we also, uh, on this, like, in, in um, collaboration, oh, alongside that, we were also recording Yolnu knowledge of these species as well, and not just identifying them from a Western scientific perspective, but also by Yolnu tax taxonomy as well. Um, and these surveys provided really great opportunities to get back out into remote areas of country, uh, provided opportunities for science communication and citizen science, because we got involved with the local community groups and schools, as well as the rangers, and it also provided a really good opportunity for the intergenerational knowledge transfer between rangers and some of the elders for the younger uh, school students. So that's how we met. Uh, and one of the big key questions coming out of these surveys were where are these small native mammal species? Uh, because we, they're one of the target species we are wanting to find in the surveys and we just weren't finding them in the number um, or species richness that we expected. Uh, so the local questions about small native mammals, we'll read these out together. So the first question is, where are these mammals? You, um, in, uh... Yolgumata in our language, uh, we just asking that same question. Is Wanaka Dika Warakan Numukuninja? Where are the small mammals? Yo, so Warakan Numukuninja is small mammals. And when we say small mammals, we're talking about bandicoots, possums, native rodents, and things like desirids like the northern quoll or red cheeked on it. Our second question was which habitats are suitable for them? Um, in Yolonga uh, Mata, that asking the same question. Wanaka Wanga, Men Mak Numukuni Warakango. So, where Men Mak um, means good uh, habitat for the small mammals. 
And our final question was, how can we work together to res restore these mammal populations? Same, um, same again, asking that question. Go, go, that means go everyone. Ilimur, gomorongan matir kajama dukkar, rungi maram, nyumukoni go warakan go. Let's get together, work together, and find a way to bring all those small mammals back. Um, and so that was the local Dawu or the local story. But when we look at a national Dawu level, we see that this is not very surprising. Um, Australia is actually a world leader in mammal decline with many species going extinct since the time of colonization. Um, species most affected, by, are most affected by the declines are smaller species within a critical weight range of 35 grams to 5.5 kilos. So we're just gonna call them small mammals in this presentation. And whilst these declines have typically occurred across the southern semi-arid and arid regions of the continent, in the past couple of decades, um, biodiversity monitoring across northern Australia um, has found severe and really rapid um, range restrictions and decline in small mammals. Cool. And when we turn to the scientific data to try and help us figure out where we can find some of these small mammal species in the IPA, um, the data is actually very scarce. So this is um, occurrence points for two culturally significant small mammal species, the Marunu or Ropu, so northern brush-tailed possum, and the Wankura or northern brown bandicoot. Uh, and this data was taken from the Atlas of Living Australia, and it represents the past 50 years of scientific data collection in the area. Cool. So in light of that, our aim was to work together under the Yolnu metaphor of Ganma. Um, and I think I'll just let Lilpia talk a bit about the Ganma metaphor. Yeah, you know, the Ganma metaphor is um, where two um, rivers meet, the, the fresh and the salt meet, and that's what we call Ganma, a place where uh, two clan groups meet together and um, make plans or discuss um, where to go next from there. Um, so just like in that Gunma metaphor, instead of the fresh and the salt water, we'll be bringing together Yolnu and Balanda or um, Western science um, to give, get, give us a deeper understanding about these small mammal species and what's happening to them. So our main aims were to record your new knowledge of these small mammal species, um, create species distribution models using the available scientific data, and then also um, synthesize or bring together those two knowledge systems and yeah, deepen our understanding, but also help us decide where to go forward from there. Okay, so moving on to the methods. First stage was planning. And what we did first was sit down and research the recorded knowledge. So this wasn't just what was recorded in the scientific literature about these species or in anthropological um, works that had recorded your new knowledge from the past, but also going to the art gallery in year color and having a look at the forms of your new knowledge that have been recorded by your new over time. So looking at the old clan bark paintings of some of these species and that one, uh, that painting there you can see is a depiction of the wankura so the bandicoot and also the yalu, the um, bandicoot nest. Hmm? Yeah, and, and the larakich, the hollow log. And we, we also identified which study species we were going to look into because there were around 17 small mammal species that have been um, thought to occur within this area. So narrowing down which species we were going to look at. And also I sat down with Lilpia and we discussed um, which people would be the best to speak to. So which senior knowledge holders um, had knowledge about these species, but also had the authority to share this knowledge with others. And first step as well was contacting these knowledge holders in a casual way, just to ask them if they'd be willing to sit down with us and do some interviews. Moving on to the interview phase. Um, 
So we interviewed young, young knowledge holders, um, mostly out on country. The interviews involved open-ended questions about species names, their distribution, abundance, threats, and any concerns uh, people had about these species, as well as their cultural significance, um, both in a spiritual ceremonial sense, but also material value. Um, we also used large maps to record any spatial knowledge that was later digitized using ArcGIS software. And then we move on to the species distribution modeling section. So we wanted to use uh, scientific data that was freely available and also a freely available um, software for the modeling. So the data, as you saw before, came from the Atlas of Living Australia. And in the end, we decided to run the models for two culturally significant species, the Maranu and the Wankura. Uh, and we used, we pulled together both scientific knowledge and also Yolnu knowledge from the interviews to decide on environmental factors that were going to be important um, for figuring out um, the best wanga, the best home or the best habitat suitability for these species across the IPA. To run the models, we used the Biodiversity and Climate Change Virtual Laboratory. So it's an online software open access and very user-friendly and easy to use. And then came the synthesis, so bringing both together. We did have a lot of discussions about this part. Um, and in the end, decided the best way to preserve the diversity of Yonu knowledge that we recorded was to actually overlay the species distribution models with the knowledge and create biocultural maps of species knowledge. Cool. But I'll explain more about that a bit later. The next part of our methods, and a very important part, is sharing of the knowledge. Uh, so I've just got a few photos of here of us presenting to the rangers and also presenting with the rangers to local school groups, um, both in English and Yonumata as well. Um, and one of the main feed, like major feedbacks we got from a lot of the interviews was that the knowledge holders or the elders were very concerned uh, with knowledge not being passed down to younger generations. So they wanted us to create uh, two-way knowledge resources with both Yonu knowledge and scientific knowledge that could be handed back to the community and used in schools and the Learning on Country program. Cool. So just to showcase you a little bit of the results, I'm just going to walk through the biocultural maps of species um, knowledge. Uh, so in the background, you have the species distribution model um, with green being high habitat suitability and blue being very low habitat suitability. So you can see for the Marnu or brush tail possum, the species distribution model actually predicted very low habitat suitability throughout the majority of the IPA area, um, which is not very helpful uh, for us in terms of guiding where we conduct our surveys to try and find remnant populations of these species. Um, and that's where the Yolnu knowledge definitely shines, giving us um, areas of past occurrence in the pink polygons and also present or recent occurrence in the yellow polygons up the top there. Uh, we also have demarcated on the map areas of cultural significance. So in the orange little symbol, um, areas where those species have connections to the country or to the clan groups of that country. Uh, different, bit of a different story for the Wankura. Um, with the species distribution model predicting very high habitat suitability throughout majority of the IPA, aside from the southern region, um, which again isn't super helpful in guiding the location of survey sites. Um, and thankfully, Yolnu Knowledge was be able, able to provide us with a bit more detail about where these species have been seen, both in the past, so over 20 years ago, and both recently within the last 20 years or presently or currently occurring as well as the culturally significant sites indicating um, sanctuaries for these species. Uh, with the Wankura, we've also got uh, the floodplains demarcated in white, like sort of around the top. Um, and that was to incorporate the knowledge of the seasonal movement of the Wankura. So they're commonly found in the floodplain during the dry season or the time of war, uh, where you go out using fire to hunt for these species. And then during the the wet season when the floodplains are full of water, um, those species retreat to the edges of those areas into woodland savanna ecosystems. Cool. Uh, so just some management implications 
uh, from this research. So it gave us increased insight into these species, abundance, distribution, their names, potential threats, and also provided these maps to help guide uh, the location of remnant populations through, through the continuation of the survey project. Um, they also indicated a decline, especially in that southern region of the IPA, where only um, past occurrence of both of those species were noted. Um, and really, I guess, reinforced in us that urgent action is needed to further investigate these species, their population trends and movements, and what we are gonna be able to do to manage threats that have been identified, such as predation from feral cats um, and habitat simplification from um, changing to fire regimes and feral ungulate um, damage as well. In terms of recognizing the value of indigenous knowledge, indigenous knowledge is very in-depth and embedded. It goes way beyond occurrence points and um, habitat association knowledge. Um, but we we're only able to showcase a little bit of that in this presentation. You can see from what we did present that it highlighted the limitations of the species distribution model. And that's probably because the model is based on really biased data from, because there was barely any data points from our actual study region. Um, and so it enhanced the final outputs from that, giving us a better understanding of where we might find some of these species. And of course, it's important to recognize that indigenous knowledge is not just something that's important for ecological projects. Um, it's very important in the daily lives, in the world view of indigenous people. Um, it's, it's a connection to their culture, to their ancestors. It's, yeah, the way they do and interact in the world and also see the world as well. So it's important not to just think about how it's gonna benefit your ecological project. And do we have time left? No? Okay, yeah, this was only if we had extra time. Um, and just, yeah, thank you to everyone who was involved in the project. It was a big collaboration, so you're playing that. You're in, <laughs> finished. <laughs> thank you for your prezzo. I just wanna know what's next for you guys. Like you've got information about threats. What happens now in terms of trying to do something about that, I guess? Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic question and something that we're really thinking about, especially with the ranges at the moment, because they're, you know, the ones out managing country. Um, in terms of the Macquarie University end, we're going to continue uh, our biodiversity survey project and try and really run some targeted surveys to locate um, some of these mammal species. Um, and then the ranges also have, you know, their different, I guess, management um, activities, managing feral like feral buffalo culling, um, they've, they've got their own fire management plan. And yeah, I guess we'll talk in the future about um, managing other threats as well, like cats, but yeah, it's sort of early days for our relationship and yeah, it's a lot of potential, so. 